we have Sidat and Patrick up on stage for a talk about how to improve uh, SFFS metadata operations. Uh, hey guys, I'm Siddharth, and uh, today I'll be talking about how to uh, how distributed file systems uh, manage their metadata and uh, how uh, they distribute their metadata and how SFFS handles that problem as well. And finally, I'll be giving an overview on ephemeral pinning, which is a, a new feature we've int introduced for SFFS, which we're actually working on. So uh, let, let me start my talk. So the the outline of the talk will be as I said before, uh, how metadata is handled by a lot of file systems and uh, how CephFS is going to handle that uh, metadata problem. Finally, ephemeral pinning. Uh, so uh, Jeff and Patrick have already given like an introduction to CephFS, so I'm not going to speak a lot about that, but uh, I'll give you a brief introduction on the components of CephFS. So first off, you have the metadata servers who are doing metadata, who handle metadata transactions and uh, who give permissions to clients, et cetera. And then you have the clients who are trying to do file IO and uh, trying to do metadata operations as well. And finally, you have the backing object storage called Rados, which has uh, object, store, object storage devices, OSDs in it. Uh, so this is the crux of, uh, so the, the crux of CephFS would be uh, Rados, because that is where uh, the storage happens. And uh, so one important question that can arise is, why do we need metadata servers at all? Like, why can't we let Rados handle your metadata workload as well? Uh, this may seem intuitive at first, but that is not exactly the case. So uh, metadata operations, uh, upon our analysis, you can see the metadata operations would take up like almost 50% of your total file system operations. And uh, another thing is that uh, RADOS or storage scales in a, a linear or straightforward fashion, but that is not exactly the case with metadata. So metadata is fairly complex, and uh, it is hierarchical in nature if you can see the file layout. So it's not very easy to scale it. So it becomes essential to decouple your metadata with your file I.O. or storage. So now, uh, since we've established the importance of metadata servers, I'll come to how a lot of distributed file systems handle your metadata. I mean, these are file systems that use metadata servers. Uh, so a very common metadata handling strategy is called uh, a pure hashing strategy. So this is employed in file systems like Luster and ZFS. So what happens here is you 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 uh, the 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 client will create a hash of the path name to the file to determine where uh, the uh, which MDS the file is going to be. I mean the inode to, for that file is going to be. So example for that would be if me the client wants to create a file called I don't know some file dot txt. In that case, I'll have to hash the path to that file. I'll get a hash. Now, keeping that aside, each MDSs would have been delegated a hash range. So you can see MDS1 is uh, delegated that hash range, MDS2 this one, and MDS3 that hash range. Uh, now, in that example, you did see that that was the hash value, and that hash value lies uh, in these two values, which is handled by MDS2. So now the client knows that it has to talk to MDS2. Uh, yeah, so that is how a hashing-based strategy works in, in a brief overview. Now, some uh, advantages you can see with this strategy is that uh, requests are going to be almost evenly distributed across the cluster, uh, since it's going to be a pseudo-random distribution of metadata, so uh, this is fairly obvious. Another advantage you can see is that uh, if you if the file name is hashed as well, so by that I mean not just the path name, the file name as well. In that case, heavy create activity in a particular directory uh, does not create like a, a, a hotspot of load or something like that in a single MDS. So an example for that would be a simple example is if you have two files under foobar called sid1.txt and sid2.txt, and uh, if you hash them both, obviously uh, it may give two different hashes, so that those two requests are directed towards two different MDSs, and you have a, a better distribution in this case as well. 
Now, some disadvantages that you can see in this kind of scheme is that uh, you, uh, according to, I mean, file system traversal semantics, you have to traverse from the root of the directory all the way till the end of the file. So uh, if you have this as an example, foo file.txt, then you'll have to go all the way from the root till file.txt. So yeah, I've just uh, detailed that here. Uh, and uh, so in this case, M uh, we've got that MDS2 is the MDS that the client has to, uh, that, that offers the client the permissions to read file.txt. And if the client does have the required permissions, then MDS2 will sync with the client to let it talk to Rados directly for file IO. Yeah. So uh, another disadvantage that, I mean, an obvious result of this is that it brings in a lot of inter-MDS hops. So you get in, uh, you get uh, hops between MDSs, uh, and this in turn results in a high network overhead. And uh, another disadvantage is that uh, with hashing-based schemes, you lose hierarchical locality. And by this, I mean you lose any metadata locality benefits you get with having like the whole directory tree in the MD cache because everything is distributed, fairly distributed. Now, uh, another disadvantage that is faced by a lot of file systems, uh, Ceph included, is that renames are expensive. So if you have a case where you have to rename so, uh, rename a directory tree, rename a directory in the directory tree which is far up, say abcd file.txt is renamed to fbcd file.txt, and uh, then you'll have to recompute all of the hashes all over again. So this is going to cost in terms of penalty, in terms of performance penalty. Another strategy which I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail is lazy hybrid. So uh, lazy hybrid, this strategy is works similar to a hashing based strategy, but it's different in such a manner that you don't have to hash each part of the uh, path name. You can directly ha hash the full path, and when it reaches and when the re request reaches the particular MDS, uh, there is an access control list in that uh, in that MDS for that particular file, which stores the effective permissions. So you just need to check that. So this kind of implicitly solves the costly problem of traversing between MDSs. Disadvantage is that, uh, like hashing, you lose hierarchical locality. There's no locality benefits in this case. Another disadvantage is that uh, for renames and for permission changes, you will have to traverse the whole path all over again, and that's going to be expensive, even though those operations are pretty infrequent. And uh, finally, this is not exactly POSIX compliant, because uh, you, I mean, you're going to have problems with uh, distributed locking and such. Now we are coming to something close to how Ceph implements. It's, uh, it's called subtree partitioning. Now in subtree partitioning, you, uh, subtrees of the directory hierarchy are assigned to individual MDSs. So in this case, you can see that, uh, so just to note, the shaded ones are directories and the unshaded ones are files. So here, the orange subtree, you can see that it's assigned to MDS2, the gray one is assigned to MDS0, uh, and so on. So uh, subtree partitioning, with subtree partitioning, you can get like a linear growth of uh, your metadata cache along with the number of MDSs, and, and, and that's pretty beneficial. And also your cache utilization will increase due to your uh, spatial locality increases. Now, some fairly obvious advantages you can see is that here you have good hierarchical locality. So since you are storing, uh, not exactly storing, since you're caching entire subtrees in the RAM, uh, you don't have to traverse from MDS to MDS in this case. So you have that benefit. Uh, next one is it scales horizontally. So uh, along with increasing number of MDSs, you can uh, assign subtrees to it and you can get a fairly horizontal scaling in this case. Another advantage is renames are not as expensive as hashing-based distributions because uh, here 
if you are if you are modifying the directory tree you don't have to hop from mds to mds you can do it locally within the metadata cache of the same mds alone but you're still going to have problems with renames which i'm not going to get get into so all this considered uh, your naive subtree partitioning seems like a good choice of a metadata management strategy for cephas but that's not exactly the case you still have a few problems here so uh, one problem is that uh, this does scale in breadth but not exactly so well when you try to scale it in depth because when the workload grows in depth you still going to have uh, a hot spot of activity on that particular mds or if it happens on multiple mdss then obviously you're going to have multiple hot spots which is not exactly good and you may have mdss which are non busy and uh, those compute resources are uh, effectively wasted in this case so so we've come up so Cef, uh, so cefafs uses something a dynamic a more dynamic version of subtree partitioning called dynamic subtree partitioning so we uh, the the problem of the problems i've talked about before can be mitigated with uh, using a balancer with using a metadata balancer that can export subtrees from one mds to another based on uh, the load factor or how uh, how much activity is going on in that particular subtree or portion of the directory hierarchy uh, so uh, this this can be achieved using a metadata counter so whenever you have activity going on on that particular inode or uh, uh, cedar then uh, your metadata counter increments and uh, based on that counter your balancer is going to decide whether you need to export it to a different mds or not so uh, since you're not explicitly storing metadata uh, you don't it's not it's not really difficult to migrate it between uh, metadata servers so uh, migrating between uh, caches is not that difficult uh, even when i said this there are cases where you have a performance penalty rather than a performance boon uh, on some workloads you you have excessive migrations which is uh, definitely not good so cefafs does give the option to override the metadata balancer by allowing the class uh, by allowing the cluster admin to manually pin the subtrees so uh, so in cases where the metadata balancer is not working well Uh, the cluster admin can choose to decide to pin that subtree to a particular mds as he chooses but even even the option of uh, uh, but giving the option of uh, pinning subtrees to the uh, cluster admin is not exactly full proof because you you can't exactly decide how the workload is going to be and uh, if uh, you can't exactly gauge the knowledge of the a uh, cluster admin to decide where he is going to pin the subtrees which ad, which mds is he going to choose so to mitigate and automate that process we've come up with something called ephemeral pinning so this is a metadata distribution strategy uh, using consistent hashing as its core so uh, consist uh, so we've decided to use not, uh, why consistent hashing actually why hashing in its sense is because uh, you can get a Uh, a proper distribution of metadata if you use hashing and uh, uh, you are you're not hashing independent directories in this case you're hashing subtrees so uh, i'll talk about that later uh, you uh, when i'm explaining this you might find it difficult to understand i have diagrams that explain it properly so just hold on and so to achieve this we've come up with two export pins or two exactors like uh, in distributed file system sense so these are ephemeral export ephemeral distributed and export ephemeral random so uh, the cluster admin can choose to set either one of the exactors on directory inodes based on knowledge of a portion of the workload uh, of how the file layout or the workload is going to be uh, so if you have a fairly distributed uh, workload in the sense that uh, the workload is creating a lot of directories under a single parent directory in that case you can choose to go for export ephemeral distributed uh, and when you have a fairly uh, a workload where it grows in depth then you can choose to go for export ephemeral random and uh, this uh, setting this exactor is going to override the metadata balancer for that particular subtree 
So uh, this is a, I'll give you a brief explanation on this. Don't worry if you can't understand it. Uh, I hope the next, the diagrams would make you understand it. So export FML distributed, if you set export FML distributed on a uh, directory, then all the child directories or the child subtrees are going to get distributed across MDSs using a consistent hashing strategy. Uh, you, the, the hashing is done on the inode number of the child directory. Uh, export ephemeral random is, is, is a bit different from export ephemeral distributed in the sense that uh, you're, you're doing this hierarchically. So when you set this on a, uh, on a directory, uh, the, the whole subtree or the subtrees that are getting loaded, which are nested beneath it, uh, will get uh, distributed to random, uh, random MDSs probabilistically. And uh, you usually set uh, the value of the exactor. Uh, it's, it's worthy to note that the value of the exactor is the probability that I just mentioned. So, and we usually make this probability as low as possible. I, I'll, I'll explain this in, in the slide. So this is export of ML distributed. So that is a parent directory that exists in MDS1, and uh, you have set the distributed pin on it. Now, when the workload is generating directories under this parent directory, uh, the hashing is done, and metadata is distributed almost pseudo-randomly across the MDSs. So as you can see, for a fairly distributed breadthwise scaling workload, uh, I mean, knowing this, it would help in setting the value of the exactor and uh, scaling metadata optimally in this case. So uh, th this is for a, this is a fairly uh, very small workload to kind of gauge how the inode distribution was across three MDSs. So uh, it, it, did, uh, it was a very small workload, it didn't even take one, uh, a minute to run. So it you can see that how, how the distribution, how the metadata is distributed uh, almost uh, perfectly across the three MDSs. So this is using the export ephemeral distributed pin. Now, export ephemeral random is uh, is different in the sense that uh, uh, okay, you have the parent directory first. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, uh, whatever is not getting uh, pinned and hashed, it is assumed that it's going to MDS one. So now it's assumed that parent directory is in MDS one and directory one is in MDS one, uh, and uh, whatever is getting hashed, you can see that goes to different directories. So. Directory two is not getting hashed. You, th this is not happening because uh, the it's. I, I told that it's probabilistically getting pinned, right? So, how you do it probabilistically is you have a random number generator to, to uh, generate a number and you check whether it's greater than that particular probability that you set. So in this case, that is not happening. So now you can see that directory tree. The condition satisfies and it goes to MDS two. Not happening. Directory six. So, if you have a fairly depth-wise workload, then this can work really well in that case. So, uh, finally, let me talk about why why we're using consistent hashing. Um, and okay, to say that, let me say what is consistent hashing first. So, consistent hashing is uh, basically a distributed hash table scheme, but uh, uh, unlike a naive distributed hash table, you don't have to resize the entire hash table when uh, you have uh, cluster modifications, like when you're scaling out or when you're scaling down. Uh, so CephFS has this another added advantage that uh, you don't need to store all the data structures of consistent hashing in your memory because, uh, because your ranks are arranged uh, in, in, a, in an ascending order of number. So it, it's, you have MDS. MD, if you have three MDSs, say MDS A, MDS B, and MDS C, then you're going to have an implicit rank for each MDS called uh, the MDS A is going to have rank zero, MDS B is going to have rank one, and MDS C is going to have rank two. So having that kind of uh, negates the need to store data structures in your memory cache. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, ephemeral pinning is a work on progress. You guys can check it out in this link. Uh, I still have a lot of benchmarking to do, uh, probably a lot of request distributions, and uh, check that out, probably. And yeah, that's it. Uh, this is my mail. If you have any doubts, you can ask uh, that. Time for questions.
Okay, no questions. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Thanks thank you. Lot.